Now when I show you it's from the company, it shows you a very neat work. They normally do this sort of thing in whenever they give you the disc for demonstration. It's neat and nice. But in real life, when you start opening up, this is what you're going to see. You're going to see bloody, you're going to see bone, you're going to see bone which is irregular. And this is exactly what, what you will see in Asian patients. And you're going to deal with your implants in that sort of situation. You raise a flap and you'll have to deal with that. This is what the reality of things of the conventional implant. And that's what you see. You put in your implants in, the steps have already been talked to you and talked about, and then you stitch it up. And obviously when you see this kind of, 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 uh, of gingiva, this sort of patient are either tobacco smokers, right, or, or they chew tobacco, or they are big smokers themselves. And also this very likely is a drinker heavy drinker. So these are all indications that normally when you do these sort of cases, you have your doubts on the success rates. And you've got to be a little bit more careful. But these are the realities of things that you see. The one I show you from the company is a straightforward, neat case where they have taken the trouble to choose a perfectly good case, ideal case. You never see this sort of thing. Remember that Asian patients have got irregular morphology of bone. And you've got to deal with it as an irregular morphology, not a case of standard. You get a standard one, you open up, you see a beautiful thing, well and good. You have nothing to worry about. But in most cases, you do not see such a thing. And that's how you, you will do, and let's look at the last. Uh, last part of this presentation here. Uh, now, after someone, the area heals up. It heals up pretty well, but you will never get a very uniform, straight, uh, gingival structure in Asian patients. You get bumps, you've got valleys, you've got mountains, hills, and all that, except that. Alright? And that's how you, you, you have your denture placed in for initially, and then you can see for yourself. The implants are really exposed there a little bit. Hmm? And those are the four, six implants, two, four, six, eight implants that have been placed there. Again, maxillary bone is very soft. They are not as good as mandibular bone. When you have so many contra uh, negative factors, like the patient smoking, alcohol taking, thick gingiva, and poor oral hygiene, the chances of failure is greater. Okay? Plus, when you have a low sinus case like this, the chances are that this implant here, the chances I'm not too sure whether this was successful, but I can bet my money on this case that he would have, within a year, these two implants would have been missing from this patient. The chances are that because what have you, you have got a little bit of bone, this one is like this, this one maybe you can succeed. This two, I, I doubt whether you can really succeed on this case. So therefore, when you choose your cases, Especially when you want to start your cases, start with the lower, or you start on the upper, see that you have an adequate bone vertically, the depth is important, as well as the width. Now this is a case done by a colleague, he's actually a professor of, of uh, oral surgery, he's a professor of oral surgery, and, uh, and that, that is that. That, that's how you place the, the implant and I, I, I'm quite sure that you may not get full success because I've done this sort of work before. I've done this many, many years. I started conventional implant about 15 to 20 years ago. I gave it up. I used to send my cases after that to a, to a colleague of mine to put the implant and I did the superstructure. Therefore, my old cases which I've done, my, my conventional implant, 
are very few and far in between. Because nowadays, I find it is almost guilty feeling that I can, when I can put it, convert many implants that I don't want to use my, my conventional implant. My set is left aside most of the time. I am very frank with you all. And then, then you, are, you see a case where, where, where the board is very narrow. You have to do board augmentation. And you, you, the, the most important thing is that once you have raised a flat, again, I want to tell you this. I would rather do a wider flat than a narrow flat. Do a wider flat. And the other thing which I, I find very easy, I do not do any more trapezoidal flat. In other words, I do not cut the two ends. I cut just one end and flat it all the way. And the other end is, and is still attached to all the gingiva. And I just raise it as I go along. That would be the best. If I have to do a case of one, two here, I would have open up here and do a cut here and raise a flat back. The success of bone augmentation depends on whether you have roughened the surface or not. So in other words, can you see what it is doing? You have to roughen that surface. Just roughen the surface before you put it. I spoken to him and he told her and told her, that is parallel glass. He said about the best material, he agreed with me. The best material he had used was also parallel glass. Because I have a tendency to use various uh, 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 bone augmentation. The gold standard, the gold standard is still your own personal bone. That is the gold standard. But you are not going to, you are, you are crazy to ask to take out a piece of kid bone to put a little bit of bone of man there and hospitalize the patient, it costs a lot of money. So you, you do not do that unless you've got a patient who, who is willing to pay that kind of money and you want to do that sort of work. It's up to you. But you have got to use the augmentation material and this will be the part of that way you can augment it. You know, you, you do an augmentation there. And then you stitch it up. Okay? Again, just to let you know, this will be a case where you want to do a conventional implant. Yeah. In a mini implant, you could easily put in a mini implant inside there, put your bone augmentation material with a mini implant, then you stitch it up. That can be done. I'll show you a case afterwards if we have the time. Stable. Conclusion stable, no grinding or adjacent healthy teeth, high chewing appetite, protect the jaw from shrinkage, no artificial feeling, and, uh, and it's high cost. Well, to them, there is high cost. Uh, that, that is how you can do that. There are two cases of, uh, of mini implant that uh, uh, conventional implants that you can put the end your implant. It's a straightforward implant without very much difficulty. Is there any questions you'd like to ask me before we proceed on a few other things on 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 the mini implants which I think about uh, more interested, also interested in. Any question? Yes. How long is the clinical history of this embryo implant? Okay, clinical history of the embryo implant is about 12 years. They, they put it in about 12 years ago where they had approval about 12 years ago. So they, they have quite a fairly bit of clinical history that is dispensable. Alright? The company promotes both. I would say the, the endure is a good product. If you are thinking in terms of going into conventional implant, you want to start, start with this. And if you are doing other implants, you will find that the complexity will allow you to change and do something simple and get good results. The important thing about implants, uh, number one, you must remember, let, let, me, let me before I, I, I forget that uh, this point. Number one is that uh, heat generation is a no-no in doing conventional implants. You are not, you want to make sure that you, uh, you keep the area cool. And 